So we continue our third song uh, on Satya Sai Baba and uh, last week we actually already started to speak about a very interesting uh, fact uh, and very interesting book and the, the, the title of the book is um, Satya Sai Baba and Nara Narayana Guha Ashram. Uh, and the book written by <clears throat> Swami Maheshwar Ananda and I'm sure that quite many Sai devotees know about this book it's uh, okay uh, since the end of 80s this book actually extremely famous among Sai devotees and the book is about mysterious um, Himalayan ashram established by Satya Sai Baba in um, middle 80s and it's interesting that actually Satya Sai Baba let uh, people to know about this ashram um, pretty soon and uh, well um, so your question uh, actually was about Maheshwarananda Swami who actually was the author of this book and whom I met in 90s. Well, basically, uh, Maheshwarananda Swami, he is from North India, and uh, normally, you know, here uh, in the West, we don't care. North India, South India, East or West, just India, okay. But when you stay in India, it's a huge difference, cultural, and um, you know uh, the feeling is different you come to north india it's one type of culture and uh, experience and you go to the south it's totally different it's like another country that that's much and of course east and west is also pretty much different so uh, swami maheshwaranda he was from north india <laughs> and um, Satya Sai Ashram, actually the put party is Andhra Pradesh state, so it's like South India. And, uh, um, well, for years, um, Maheshwarananda, um, okay, you know, he was staying a lot of different parts of Himalayas and practicing meditation and japa. Um, and uh, later on, he came to know about Satya Sai. And he understood that, you know, when I again, made friendship with him, and it was very special because uh, Maheshwarananda was um, so humble, uh, amazing um, person, because, um, you know, he was, uh, he became actually very famous because of his book. You know, just imagine he wrote and published his book, which is Satya Sai Baba and Nara Narayana Guhashram and just immediately became like uh, very famous and of course he, he became famous but at the same time his point was very clear like you know if uh, because the, also the subtle thing was that uh, Maheshwarananda Swami was staying in Satya Sai Ashram so can you imagine famous person in the ashram of course many people um, try to to contact him to get some spiritual advices like just to, to speak with him but he was like you know refusing mostly um, <clears throat> to meet people it was very difficult even just okay to spend half an hour with him because he was just um, practicing meditation and japa a lot and he was just uh, receiving darshans of Satya Sai and his point was very simple if if you guys um, uh, come to the Satya Sai Ashram you have to have proper concentration on the Divine Master on Satya Sai do not waste your time uh, like speaking with somebody that was his point and that's brilliant because you know what's happened <clears throat> many people uh, like to use uh, the name of Satya Sai just to attract attention to themselves. Like, you know, there's a subtle difference between bring message about uh, Satya Sai, but at the same time to remain 
empty. And another choice, you know, to bring message about such a side and, uh, you know, to attract attention to your own small and wonderful egoistic personality. And for me personally, it's also the big question. Because, uh, okay, first of all, um, <clears throat> okay, I published three books in Russian language about Satisai with my memories about Satisai because in the 90s I was lucky enough to be his translator for the Russian speaking groups. And you know, it's a big question. Uh, okay, now we are like in the process of translating and publishing all that books in English and for me it's also the question, I mean, um, am I the one who is just bringing message because actually it's my duty to bring my memories in front of the public because you know, most of the, most of my friends, they understand this and actually I started to write books as a result of, you know, my friends' demands, like like kind of, you have to write the books because you have so many stories, you have to publish them. That's like kind of service. By the way, it's just service to the people. And some people um, who don't like me, they say, no, no, you are trying to publicize yourself because of our Swami. That's a big question, yeah? We have to be careful because, you know, if I'll keep silence, no stories, guys, that will be my responsibility and who knows, maybe my sin, you know, to, to hide all the stories which I have in my memory. But if I start to speak, I have to be careful because if I just bring message, that's great, that's service. If, if I'll just try to attract to my personality, that's wrong. And for me, Swami Maheshwarananda was and is brilliant, perfect example. What does it mean to, to bring message but remain empty? Bring message but, you know, to, to not to build another tradition about yourself. Yeah, I mean, um, and uh, somehow I could convince him that I'm interested in meditation, Kriya Yoga meditation, mantras. At that time I was really serious about learning Sanskrit. And I was learning Sanskrit in Moscow State University and from some couple of uh, Indian Swamis uh, from Rishikesh, from Calcutta, so like that. And I don't know why, but Swami Maheshwarananda chose to, okay, to let me uh, you know, sometimes to visit him, sometimes to stay with him, sometimes to discuss certain questions. Uh, Is he still still alive? No, 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 no. I, I actually I don't remember when he passed away, but it's you know many years ago. He was pretty old when I was uh, just visiting his small room, and uh, you know a few interesting things. Um, um, you know, just another time we we discussed with you the interesting phenomena when somebody is um, experiencing absolute consciousness. You know, must that person to stop practice meditation and mantra or not? A huge question. And um, you know, sometimes. A divine trick happen, and some mystics they experience. Okay, let us call it enlightenment. I I re, I'm really afraid to use this term because there are many kinds of concepts about enlightenment. There are many levels of enlightenment, and by the way, quite many, especially new age new age people, they deny that there are many levels. They say. Enlightenment is only one. And normally then they say, and I'm in that state. Stupid, yeah? But the classical approach of the yoga, yoga tantra, raja yoga, is that, oh, come on, there are many steps, there are many levels. And if you experience something, it doesn't mean that that's complete picture. You just 
you, you have certain experience that's nice but never say that i mean this is the end because if people say oh, okay i'm in that absolute state we have a lot of people like that in europe in um, the united states in russia everywhere you know i it's like kind of really funny for me okay russian language uh is a Turk tradition is a pretty much separate from the western one because of the language okay uh, i think that maybe two or three russian um mystics may uh, speak english so it's possible to watch some russian meditation masters in english just maybe two or three yeah and all the rest they speak just only russian language so that's reason it's like huge part of the world which is absolutely separate and people in the west they even don't know that names but for me it's very kind of funny that every year in you know on the internet youtube facebook etc like more and more enlightened people they give satsang lectures in russian language okay in germany in english and uh, in, in in england and the united states more and more boys and girls think that they are already know everything and they just keep on repeating the same basically wonderful things but it just they keep on repeating somebody's nice words and that somebody also repeating somebody else and in, and uh, nobody is saying that you have to practice meditation i'm really sorry <laughs> people forgetting about this and uh, it's very easy to repeat some of these words about enlightenment it's not difficult and when you just see that videos it's absolutely clear nice people but no that vibration no power no like you know light and just good people speak about good things and uh, you know if somebody may say i am absolutely enlightened immediately the question is come on like sir or madam you know come on like are you satya sai already are you mahatar babaji already are you gorak nath already are you jesus the christ already if you say that you you know absolute uh truth or absolute alignment this is your experience yeah it's, and mahishwarananda was you know he spent really second half of his life next to such a sign his ashram and you know interesting thing uh, mahishwarananda he told me like okay first half of his life he spent in himalayas then he came to know about such a sign he came to the ashram um, and um, he told me that at that moment when he came to put party and met satyasai he understood that satyasai much more than himalayas that that was uh, his original words i mean mahishwarananda's words that okay this is much greater than himalayas what is the point to stay there so he chose to stay in in put party in satyasai ashram and he was very humble you know spending years and years next to such a site was absolutely clear for him that come on even if you have certain experiences it's uh, uh, impossible you know to say that you know everything when just next door from you is such a site the wonderful thing about like staying you know next door from such a site that you may really understand that this pathway to the absolute truth is eternal you never able to say really that okay now i am i'm reached that point and now i can speak with you as a buddha as a jesus no it's a never ending process and mahishwarananda was practicing every day that's a huge example for all of us he was practicing meditation every day he was practicing uh, japa every day those people who remember him from 90s and 80s okay i remember him from 90s now he was uh, you know in the, in the main gate 
the very famous main gate in Satya Sai Ashram, and just next to the main gate is a very famous Ganesha uh, temple. Because Satya Sai Ashram is a huge, like, like city, you know. And then just immediately, just next to the uh, main gate inside the ashram is very small Ganesha temple, which we can say is not really temple, but like just statue. Many people are just keep on praying there. Because uh, Satya Sai just bless it, like very special one. <coughs> and every morning, every evening, at that time, Mahishwaranda was always next to the Ganesha the stage you keep on like moving with the japa mala rosary practicing mantra 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 and it was great lesson because uh, many people could come to such and say oh, okay already now everything i don't need to practice but um, really we have to be very careful about when to stop to practice i mean if you uh, if you're already Himalayan Mahatma, maybe must probably don't need to practice. For all the rest, please continue because then is a also kind of spiritual illusion. And um, uh, you know, I asked uh, quite few times Maheshwarananda some spiritual instructions about chakra meditation, different kinds of meditation related with the chakras, channels, <clears throat> and it was funny that, I mean beautiful and funny, that time of course it was funny and kind of shock for me that he was trying to, to explain some techniques and then on the way uh, it was clear that he, he doesn't remember certain terminology, yogic terminology, but it was clear that he is in such a deep experience that he sometimes he even already forgot certain terminology because he's already in that experience. For example, if you are yoga practitioner of any kind, if you if you are yoga teacher, especially of course you know, you know like names for all chakras, for all channels, for all asanas, for different kinds of meditation techniques. Yeah, but for Mahishwarananda was easily remember only half of them. Can you imagine you're just speaking with somebody and you feel that that somebody really in a state of huge cosmic consciousness and he's forgetting names of every second chakra. And he's just explaining to you how to work with the chakras and just not sure about the names. Amazing, you know. <laughs>